By the way, let me We're, stop you. It did come, they wrote it in 92, came out in like 94. And yes. what's weird is after I made a big deal about this like eight years ago on, on Wikipedia and on, um, but I own a copy. There's one here in the office. I just happened to mention this as a factoid. because So I have the one published in, in 94. They come back out with it and say original publishing date, 1996. I mean, that shows again that what they're doing. It's so amazing that even on Amazon, they changed the date. Well, they always tried to to you know cover their tracks, and that you know that was something that we saw here in the uh, the Oklahoma City case. Is you know the early hours, the the truth always comes out in the media. It's within within hours they get control of the story and start pushing you know whatever cover up they're going to to perpetrate. In Oklahoma, only one news station maintained any integrity for a few months, which was Channel Four, and uh, then the New York Times came in, bought bought the local news station, fired the program director and the lead reporter, and then any uh, information that contradicted the official story was completely. Silence. The local media tried to do a good job here, and we could see firsthand how the feds came in, how the New York Times came in, and squashed all independent inquiry into the bombing. Channel 4 was interviewing John Doe number two witnesses, talking about what the tapes really showed, talking about the second bombs, talking about accomplices, then all of a sudden it was just shut down. And let's expand on that. Well, Channel 4 started basically the original inquiry into the bombing. The first questions raised were why the office of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in the building was empty. The ATF, which had started the Branch Davidian raid two years before to the day, was the supposed target of the attack, but their office is empty. One of the men who, res who responded to the bombing, who was trying to look for his wife, he talked to an ATF agent who told him that they had been paged, notified by their pagers, <coughs> to not come in to work that day. Well, that's that right, man, and Terrence Yankee and some of the doctors involved said within a minute after it happened they were in full gear demanding patch me up i was up in there and they're like no you weren't terrence yakey and dr plumley were asking questions about when they showed up why there were certain federal officials there on site fbi officials too the fbi headquarters is several miles away there were people there already and yet terrence yakey was four blocks away he was the first person to respond a lot of questions raised we show in this movie that the atf story about what they were doing in that building is a lie we name an and they practice months before in new mexico blowing up a rider truck i mean there is no end to these people i mean there is really no end to how evil they are my no god to, yeah. it, it is just unspeakably wicked but but you know talking about the censorship buying up that tv station and and everything else that we saw and changing the publishing date on this book that just shows you how scared they are of info. This info didn't have power. If, if the global terrorists, the social engineers were invincible, they wouldn't care. The well, fact that, I mean, seeing now military on the streets, checkpoints, going to arrest citizens, training that Oklahoma City investigators, including state reps, are terrorists. We, you, you get the manuals. I mean, it looks cartoonish. Because it's so over the top, but it's really happening. But you look at Hitler, Stalin, Mao, that looks cartoonish. Why'd they put up with it? Well, it's the authorities. So, I mean, seeing everything happen today as it all comes true, this just adds to the urgency. Uh, your views on that? Well, it's it's very uh, timely because as we talk about the NDAA bill passing with the indefinite detention of American citizens without trial, even if they're found innocent, you say, well, okay, who are they going to who are they going to round up? Through Operation Defuse, documents, internal Fusion Center documents were leaked to us that show OKBombing.net, which was a uh, website originally ran by the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee, a state representative, Charles Key, is listed under domestic terrorism. I mean, this shows the people that they want to round up because. These institutions' primary goal above anything else is self-preservation, and they have to silence anybody that has the audacity to expose the crimes of the global oligarchy. By the way, we've, we've talked to investigative journalists, Wayne Madsen and others, who've talked to high-level federal informants, Judge Roll, and I've seen other connections uh, showing this, Judge Roll, who got shot in the Gifford situation, and I heard this at the time, I was like, no, that, you know, that, that was about a gun-running thing, and he was going to expose it, was meeting with her secretly and kind of a transpartisan deal, but now there's evidence that that was really a hit uh, to basically cover up what was happening. But I mean, there it is. Just six, eight months ago, they were saying it's a conspiracy theory. We didn't ship guns into Mexico. We only watched them at gun shops. Then it turned out they ordered them to do it. That was just a cover to blame the Second Amendment. They were really shipping 18 wheelers of guns in, cocaine back in. And now it's all there. New York Times, El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, we've all covered it here in probably 15 reports. 
Well, I mean, you see how the media is, is controlled this way. The same week we released our movie, Newsweek magazine released on its uh, internet organ, The Daily Beast, a, an article that was supposed to be an expose of Operation PACCON in the early 90s. PACCON may have been the genesis of the Oklahoma City bombing. PACCON was an operation the FBI and the ATF undertook to infiltrate every so-called dissident group in the country. Yeah, no, McVeigh and was part of that, going to every gun show, the Davidians, every event to, to scope out who they wanted to blame for the attack. But when you look at the Newsweek article when it was finally released, that all mention of Tim McVeigh, Andy Strasmeyer, who we have cited in the Murrah building with bombs, and Operation Pacon have been excised from the final version of the article, and that has been proven because the original article was leaked out. So they are still exercising the cover up here. They do not want they do not want Pacon getting out because that was where where Oklahoma City may have been born, because it can prove that they were watching McVeigh, that McVeigh was surrounded by government informants from day one. No, no, exactly. Exactly. They always use a, another operation as the cover umbrella, just like with the 7-7 attack in England. It's admitted the government ran drills, the exact bus, exact trains attacked at the exact same place at the exact same time. It's something like 20-something trectagillion. That's exactly. billions of times all the s grains of sand in the world that that would happen. 9-11, every one of these events, so that if other government agencies bust the intercriminal group doing it, they say, oh, it's just a drill like 9-11 with Tripod 2, with Giuliani, the attacks on the towers. Yes, and we actually have uh, a Senate aide that told Charles Key that it was uh, that they had information that this was a sting operation that had gone bad. Well, you look that's at that. Like that's like World that's Trade a, Center, where they cook the bomb, train the driver. The informant says you're going to let it go forward, knows they're setting him up. He records the FBI, Ahmad Salam, saying go ahead and exactly. let it happen. Same deal. He was smart enough, though, to record him. So we have New York Times, CBS News. Yes, the government allowed it to take place. No, and they didn't allow it to take place. They did it. Yeah, and what happens with this is even the, the agents that were not necessarily involved in taking the operation live, they are complicit in the cover-up to preserve them, the, the, themselves and their pensions, you know, so it, it gets the whole institution involved in the cover-up. Well, we see the mechanism for a false flag operation is that they take an existing operation, they insert a few key personnel, and they turn it to their own ends. The Oklahoma City bombing was originally supposed to be a big publicity stunt. That that bomb was supposed to explode the early uh, the previous night and destroy an empty building. That's what they were waiting on—a big PR stunt. That's not. And that's why McVeigh about. got so mad. We're told because he didn't want to <clears> kill <throat> kids. Exactly. And then once they messed up and it blew up and killed over 100 people, almost 200 people, now everyone goes into cover-up mode for what they think is a tremendous foul-up. But it's not. It actually did go along according to the plan, and that's how they get the cover-up installed. It's not like every agent on the street is covering up the fact that the FBI blew up the Murrah building. No, it's, it's declassified it's that Lee Harvey Oswald had a top security clearance at a YouTube base in Japan, was CIA, the documents have now been declassified, and they set him up. He's like, I'm a patsy, and they're like, you're not going to talk. Boom, with a guy they know has already got cancer. And, and Jolly and West, McVeigh's doctor, is involved with that. Who's in the congressional <laughs> hearings. Folks, I know this sounds crazy, but you've got to look it up yourself. As the number two guy under Ewing Cameron for mind control programs, MK Ultra. I mean, this is, and you cannot make up how weird this is. Yeah, and people would question, well, if he was a government agent working, why would he not expose the people that were higher up? And whenever Dr. Jolly West comes on the scene uh, consulting with the defense team, you know, immediately after the bombing, this guy's worked with Saran Saran, Jack Ruby, uh, Patty Hearst, you know, any of the, these big events to, to, you know, and then all of a sudden now they, they're silent on what happened. You know, I think that's a good possibility as to why McVeigh wasn't talking after the event. And then you see that Dr. Jolly West actually passes the torch to his protege, Wendy Painting uncovered information where uh, his protege John Smith took over with McVeigh. That guy is now in charge of psychology at Guantanamo Bay. Which they admit has another base within it where they do mind control studies. That's even Washington Post. And then they release those guys to become Al-Qaeda leaders leading the Libya attack. Exactly. It's kind of a, the self-perpetuating cycle. They create these zombie killers in these in these uh, mind control camps. What we see at Guantanamo Bay is that there's you have Camp X-ray, and then you what ha you have what the guards call Camp Nowhere, which is a map that's not a camp that's not on the map where the real heavy stuff goes down. So I mean, this well, they is, admit that CIA doctors. 
Exactly. Right, and they use uh, the 3Ds, dependency, debilitation, and dread. This was pioneered by, you know, you and Cameron and, and Jolly and West. They're using that at Guantanamo Bay, and I think this is probably why they're not interested in old, older so-called Al-Qaeda people being put they in there. They that's only why, want kids. That's why it came out again in the Washington Post and in Operation Jawbreaker that they wanted 12-year-old kids in Afghanistan. That's who they mainly were grabbing because they can purely program them, and these are going to be the terrorists they're going to unleash on America. And for those that don't know, there's History Channel specials, even. Even, admitting that Ewing Cameron, Jolly and West's boss, would grab foster children and put them on hallucinogens for a year straight, frying their brain with audio recording who they were and keywords to get food, to stop the dread, putting them on PCP, dancing around in devil outfits, terrorizing five-year-old girls. I mean, th we, this country is run by absolute psychopathic killers. And the government, I mean, it came out in Guantanamo Bay. I'm not even going to say on air what they do to those people. I mean, it is, it is, it is just, it is unbelievable, man. And they're all going to hit us with jihadi attacks. And then they'll come and say, we've got to stick our hands down your children's pants because we're fighting al-Qaeda, who publicly works for them. Exactly. I mean, what we see there is that they, they create the actual problem. This is the false flag attack. They create the actual problem. And if people have a hard, hard time believing that this government or a faction of this government could have pulled off Oklahoma City, look at what the CIA has been doing to countries overseas for decades, fostering coups, putting in military strongmen that killed thousands of people, doing fake bombings under Operation Gladio in Europe and Italy. The Italian Senate has accused the CIA of, of uh, being involved in the Bologna train bombing station, uh, Bologna train station bombing. No, no, their former president, who was the head of, of their intelligence agency at the time, said he was involved in it. And he said 9-11's an inside job. That's the big Italian papers. You're so absolutely when they, right. When they, when they bring that mechanism home to affect change here, why should we be surprised? Like we said, if you don't hold them accountable, they will continue to do their crimes and make them greater. What incentive do they have to stop? None. And the only reason we're still alive is because if they kill us, it highlights everything we've said, exclamation points. They still may do it, but once you understand these are cold-blooded killers who even set up their own agents who are gonna bomb a empty building, and then McVeigh throws a fit, and we've talked to the witnesses, you know, family and others, lawyers, as you said, he just, I'm not gonna blow kids up. Forget this, they're like, they'd already psychologically pegged that he was Dudley Do-Right was gonna do that. They were all ready, I mean, they, they're like, because it's run by 170 IQ psycho psychiatrist. This whole thing is run by them. Well, they've had decades to hone their technique. I mean, MK Ultra started in the 1950s, uh, to under, under the 1960s under that name, then it changed and it went underground. I mean, they've had decades to and hone their technique. And they profiled McVeigh, they profiled Lee Harvey Oswald. McVeigh's military records from special forces were never released. His psychological records were never released. And what medical records we do have are very disturbing. He was going to the doctor um, at last count over a hundred times in just three years in the military. That is highly unusual for someone in the combat arms, highly unusual for someone like McVeigh who claims never have any health problems. He's going to the dentist once a week for over a year, claims he has no dental problems. What is he doing? What is he going under? We don't know. And they have never released all those records in full. In fact, those records on McVeigh were sealed on orders of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Exactly. It's national security everywhere. Gentlemen, great job. Look forward to talking to you again and interviewing some of the people that are uh, in your uh, film. Amazing job. Available at Infowars.com. People got to get this video out to everybody. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, folks, that is it for this split edition of Infowars Nightly News with Mike Adams in the first half, and I came in in the second half. Great job to the crew. God willing, we'll see you back Sunday live on the radio, 4 to 6 p.m., and back Monday on the radio show and then the nighttime show. Why do we work so hard? Because we know terrorists are running the government and nobody's safe. It's like that old analogy of the old 40s you know, adventure movies where the, where the explorer, the archaeologist, kind of the remake of Indiana Jones is in the, in the temple and the ceiling's coming down to kill you with spikes. You've got to find the lever to stop it or get out of there. I mean, it's not like, God, you're brave. You're trying to get out of this. Brave? No, I'm not brave. I realize that our society has no future. I guess I'm brave that I'm not a coward who only thinks about myself, and if I grovel, maybe I'll get a few more years out of this. There's no point even going forward if we don't beat these people. You think they stop blowing up federal buildings? They're putting stuff in the water, the food they've been caught. It's all public, the vaccines, the Rockefeller Foundation. We've shown it to you. All you've got to do is flip the switch and stop being naive. The film's a noble lie available at InfoWars.com. And they could kill all of us, but this information will live on. And that's what's important. Expose false flag terror. Expose the New World Order. Order the film. Give the gift of truth. Order it by Sunday night. 
guaranteed before Christmas delivery, under that tannin bomb to wake somebody up, give the gift of truth, expose the false flag, because they're getting ready to stage more and blame it on domestic groups. They'll flip the whole Al-Qaeda brainwashing onto domestics. You already see the beta testing, the preconditioning. It's here. All right, I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War.